This first simple tip is very important for new players. The prone key. You must assign it and you must use it. Basically, whenever you move infantry, if you want to the fire straight away, you just press the prone key and they'll start firing. If you move or keep moving or move somewhere else, they don't fire. It's very important. So whenever you encounter the enemy, you can fire at them straight away. The AI automatically does go on prone once they're on fire, but it does take a while, so you want to press it yourself. So in this case, you see infantry, you just prone straight away, you start shooting first and start killing the enemy before they can kill you. This is how most new players will use the infantry. Just leave them behind cover in a shootout, bunched up. The negatives of this is, obviously, the missed opportunity in flanking and being able to get a grenade off. Also, you're in risk of getting grenaded yourself with one grenade, all these guys will be dead. Um, also, with this, you're just basing it on the skill of the squad you have. Such as, if you are with the USA squad, you have the M1 Garanda BRs. These are actually probably the better regular squads in the game, and you can probably outshoot all the other ones. Um, also depends though, the Germans can win sometimes if the MG42 survives, so that's crucial for the German reg regular squads. For the assault squads, it's dependent um, on the STG44 for the Germans, so if the STG44 guy perishes, the assault squad leader first, the squad will lose. Otherwise, it's pretty even all around with the assault squads. So. That's the only thing that really um, will decide the battle, <laughs> having the knowledge of the squads and how to range them. Obviously, if it's a regular squad, at longer range, you'll beat an assault squad. Um, but yes, don't, it's not desirable to do this way. But that being said, um, you do not try to over micro units. Let's say you have a unit in the other side, like a tank which was um, in a duel with another tank and you need to do a 50-50 play, by all means control that. One squad does not mean much if you lose it. Do not uh, fuss over little things like that if you've got a bigger problem at the other side of the map. In this scenario here, this is the exact same squad in the initial shootout that was just stationary. Using it differently can give you entirely different results and better results. So basically you want to spread them out to draw the fire in different areas. And once you draw the fire in different areas, this will allow um, some single troops to move into different areas closer because they're not all shooting in one area. See, none of these guys actually targeted that guy because they were shooting in the other locations. Now I can move up my other forces even closer. I'm not using any grenades, by the way. I'm just going to show you how just moving your troops around and just using the sheer firepower, or just shooting the enemy to death, basically, by flanking. And you can see the AI throws it automatically if it's close by. Just moving up close by, just trying to get off a grenade as well, and just shooting down here. So I really lost uh, two or three guys to the whole squad in comparison to just being a normal shootout, so that's without really throwing too many grenades. In this scenario, I'll be explaining a more extreme scenario of flanking. This is basically using the same squad. Um, so I'm not actually adding more infantry to it. If I add more infantry to this, it will even be more devastating. So as you can see here, I'm doing a really wide split here, and I'm flanking from the very sides there. And I f you can see the position here, finding a flanking position over here. And I can quite easily DC one of the Thompsons. So sometimes I do like to DC um, an actual infantrymen just to shoot down an area here if I have a really good spot and I have nothing else to control. Usually in the start games I like to DC my infantry guns. As you can see here I'm in a great position here to just shoot down all the infantry from the side and flank them. Whenever you move your infantry you want to be able to split them up into different locations of the map. The reasons are getting the opportunities because the more areas you are on the map the more chances you are in luck um, to get a good flank off or a good grenade off another reason is the enemy will be forced to shoot in multiple locations so the AI I'm not sure how it reacts or how it chooses its targets but it seems to be random so it will potentially shoot at the other areas away from someone that you want to grenade so as you can see here I'm also using my squad knowledge here putting my Assault Squad SDG44 guy behind the cover there so we can shoot down into the area because it's a very good um, accuracy. Just sending one guy on the right and some guys on the left. It's not the best split I've ever done. It's very slow and clumsy. But you can see it's still quite effective just because I have split up the forces. So just one guy grenading there from the side. 
I found an opportunity behind that cover to grenade. It doesn't matter which map you do, you'll find something to hide behind. And another one off there, running behind cover. As you can see, these guys over here, they didn't really fire at my guy here, because they were shooting the guys behind cover back here. Some of them are also shooting my other guy down here, which enables this guy to get the grenade off. So that's why you should spread them out. And just trying to flank there. And I'm just sending my infantry man by man until they keep dying. Just trying to make use of all my arsenal, throwing everything I have. Now taking away some of my guys in the shootout to get some more grenades off. There's not many people shooting at me now. I can now charge just directly from the front in relative safety. And yep, they're just firing at that guy there. So spreading of the troops is the point I'm getting to draw the fire away from the grenaders. Also to enable um, your troops not to be pinned down by one direct fire in one location and also having the above all having the opportunity to grenade or flank enemies. In this scenario I'll just show you how important it is to have domination of the infantry. At the start of the game you want to build as much infantry as possible and throughout the game you want to have more infantry than the other opponent. This is why sometimes banking is not a good option, because basically you can lose your entire forces. In, in this scenario, I'll also won't be really microing my units, which you don't need to do with the mass squads. See, I'm just charging my regular squad in, just doing a basic split, not a unbelievably perfect split. You can see it's just a bit stumbling, but nevertheless, it's doing its job, just shooting down at the enemy, and I'll just get my other entire squad to just charge down there and just try flank them and tear them apart. So I'm just using the flanking and also the numbers to my advantage. Opponent sees me, grenades, but didn't get it off too well. But still, I still survive and I'm just going to just move up my troops slowly. Flank them. This is the numbers to destroy them. As you can see there, the entire squad is pretty much wiped out now. Just by the number and superiority of the firepower. In this scenario, I'll show you how grenading can be done if you want to do it sneakily. In this scenario, my opponent does sneaky grenade down here. Usually when I see a sneaky grenader, I try to right click on it and to kill it. But in that case, there was cover there blocking him. But you can see it can be quite effective. You can throw a grenade without you seeing if you are blocked up this way. This is why you should not blob up. I myself don't like to use this sneaky grenade tactic because it does take a lot of micro and I prefer to just flank and do it really quickly. But in that case, with the sneaky grenades, it is less risky to lose your infantry. This is an extremely basic scenario where it's just going to show you how cover is so important. I'm setting two regular squads versus one regular squad behind cover. Just charging, proning when I get there, which you should and just having a shootout with them. As you can see, the damage I'm doing to them is not much compared to the damage he's doing to me. Simple as that. Do not charge infantry without cover. If I was playing properly, I would probably run away or get behind some of the cover down here, over here on the side, so I can at least shoot behind cover, then get some other guys to flank. <laughs> 